This is Oscar Bevis for the Stomping Ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and available on the zone. Jamie Moore shows me. Thanks for giving me you, mate. All right. some of your time, my friend. Um, they've gone full schmoozing mode for Pat Brown today. He's even had his face on the menu. Um, yeah. I guess this was someone <laughs> with a sought after signature. Um, and you can see why Eddie and Matchroom have gone full throttle today. Well, f from a personality point of view, without a doubt, you know, he's, he's, def he's definitely got the characteristics where you would like to sort of, someone who's signing on, you know, he's, he's very engaging, can speak well, good looking lad. Um, most most important attribute is he can really fight. And uh, and maybe even more important than that is he's a Man United fan. So that's even even better for me. So um, they see that's my one downside to Pat so far. Yeah, well, well, there we go. You can't all be perfect. <laughs> you can't, you, yeah, exactly that, yeah. So, uh, but it's going to be such a good, good, exciting journey, you know. He's, I think he's said it himself a few times. He just loves having a tear up. Um, it's not just all got some glory though. You know, he's, he's quite good technically. Um, he just likes having a tear up. So, so that's the best bit. He's the, the, the worst type of person who likes having a tear up is when they're technically not not that good. But but Pat's really good. Um, you know, we're, we're going to get to work with him now over the next sort of six months, twelve months. You know, working on defensively, that more intelligent type of pressure. You know, choosing when to go, choosing when not to. And me and Nigel have uh, already sat down and started sort of putting those tracks in place. And um, I think in in 12 months' time, you're gonna, everyone's going to be sat here talking about a fighter who, you know, in the not too distant future after that, will be gunning for a world title. I'm really excited about the journey, and it's been a delight to sit down and talk to him. He's a really, really lovely bloke yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, but I'll be right in saying he represented Moss side in the ABAs. So he so was he's, in the he's someone that's kind of been around you guys yeah, for a while. Yeah, he, he, he was at Sale West, uh, which was his dad's club, and then he moved to Moss side, changed changed close to Moss side, which which I think he was very, you know, dignified move from his dad. His dad believed that he needed to go somewhere else to, to pick up some different, you know, skill sets. He boxed Conor Tudsbury and lost on Nigel's show, and it was straight after that that they sent he sent him to the to their club. So I, I just think it's a, a lovely story, and um, you know, Nigel setting up like Jimmy Moss side. I think it was 16 years ago, with an idea that he was going to change kids' lives, not even ever envisaging that it would get to the stage where they would start to turn pro, and you know, really make a a, a, a massive change to their lives and make some hopefully make some good money and, and change it for the long run. So, um, so I'm, I actually, I've actually set up an, uh, an amateur boxing club up in my area because of the success what Nigel's club has. So, so, so it's a really nice story. We've got two of his lads just turning pro at the same time and we've got one from my amateur boxing club, Alfie Middlemiss, is turning pro. So all three of them are going to be making the professional debut around about the same time. So it's a, it's a great time for our gym. But I just think it's a lovely story and it shows the, the impact what amateur boxing clubs have on communities like, you know, Moss Side and Salford. Yeah, it's brilliant what you guys are doing and the progression is obviously clear to see. Um, talking of him and Connor and that fight that you mentioned, does he still wind Pat up about that? Um, we do. <laughs> Connor, Connor, Connor's you know, pretty, pretty laid back and uh, he's, he's, he, he, does, he does seem like a laid back yeah, guy. Yeah, he's a really chill guy, so I don't think he throws it in Pat's face too much, but Nigel you know, probably reminds him on a daily basis. I'm not surprised about that. Um, it, must be, well, it must feel really packed in the gym all the time. Me and Andy from IFL and Nigel talking about this whilst he was having a nice bit of lunch. Um, 10, 11 pros you guys are sitting yeah, on Yeah, and the, they're not all in the gym at the same time. So, so, and, and a couple of them are sort of towards the end of the career, you know, Stephen Ward, um, he's, he's, he might never box again, he might have another fight or two in him. Mark Leach, he's, he's looking like he's, he's back end of his career. Uh, Tursun Kalat, mate, he's in, he's in Kazakhstan, so he only comes over there for sort of four to six weeks for a training camp. So it's not like everybody's in the gym every day at the same time, but, and we've got three new recruits. So, uh, but, we, but the way we've got it now, we've, you know, it's been gradually building, so we've sort of got a nice little um, timetable where they, they're all in the gym at the same time, but they're staggered, so that each person gets their own individual time, but the atmosphere is still the same in the gym, so it's all created by all the same people, and uh, they're not sort of in the gym on their own, and, and they're not able to sort of gain those relationships with the fighters, because we've got such a good gym, and they all get on so well with each other, and. You, 
everyone comes and supports each other and they're all in the, in the changing rooms, you know, uh, just, just, there, just, just for a bit of moral support. So um, it's such a good time for the gym and I'm looking forward to Manchester boxing. You know, we've, we've had so many good times in Manchester and it seems to come in dips and troughs, but it's like the start of a new era and, you know, looking like Pat's going to be able to spearhead that alongside Connor, hopefully Alfie Middlemiss, and then you've got the likes of, you know, uh, Pat Barrett's got some, some great talent coming in from, from uh, Collier's to Moston gym. Andy Crowley's a coach in, himself and he's got, he's got his brother Will, who's coming through, who's a phenomenal talent. So there's so many good fights um, or so many things to look forward to in Manchester. I'm just privileged to be a part of it. Yeah, mate, it's a great city. I love spending time up yeah. here. So the more fights here, the better. Um, I will talk about Jack Cattrall, obviously Manchester last summer. I didn't get to speak to you after the fight. Um, I asked to do an interview, but you had Guinness in hand, and I thought, you know what, celebration yeah, it, mode. It's probably best I just let you. It guys was only going to go one way. That you know, I probably <laughs> have said something that I regretted, and then actually I should have deleted. So, <laughs> so it's glad, I'm, I'm glad that we didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just recapping that win over Regis Progre, um, a fight that kind of took a while to, to catch fire, but Jack, when he was, you know, in there and on it, was was so on it. Yeah, yeah, and and I've just we, we had this conversation there where we where we was all eating. Jack wasn't well for that fight, and you know he had problems. Um, we we couldn't spar because he had a problem with his rib, uh, which which meant that he couldn't he couldn't full spar. So so he couldn't really get his timing and his distance, and maybe that's the reason why the fight didn't sort of take fire early on uh, maybe he was conscious about you know making sure that um, going into the second half of the fight he make, making sure the gas in the tank because he really wasn't well so um, so when you when you put all those things into the equation the performance what he put in was unbelievable and you know I, I had a conversation with him and I think he was the end of the seventh round saying listen you, you need to get a move on here now because you, you, I, on my card you're falling behind and, and to be fair, the response what he gave me, I couldn't have asked for anything better. And it, it turned, it, you know, that ninth round was the turning point. It was a big round, a three-point swing. And then he finished strong and, um, and got a fantastic win under his belt. Yeah. And moving forward, I know there's been a bit of news today from the WBO about the fight with Arnold Barboza. Yeah. Um, what are you expecting over the next couple of weeks about that kind of unfolding and, I guess, getting a date set and kind of getting everything in motion? I think, you know, is a great fight for Jack, I believe. Um, we'll see what happens at the weekend, Parrow and Hitchens, um, because obviously Eddie's got both of those, so so that's an easy fight to make. Um, well, Parrow was really the name that people were talking about the most around yeah. Jack's fight week in terms of. Of course, yeah, and, and I think stylistically it's a great fight. You know, I, I don't, I don't think I couldn't, I couldn't imagine Jack versus Hitchens to be an exciting fight to watch, whereas I can see Parrow and Jack to be an exciting fight. Um, we'll, we've got to wait and see what's happening with Tio to see whether he's going to give the belt up because if he does then then maybe there's the possibility of Jack versus Barbosa for the vacant title uh, but I'd love I'd love Jack to fight Teal you know you know if he if he's willing to stay at the the weight and uh, and he and he sees Jack as a big enough fight after Jack coming off three big wins you know if he if he fights Barbosa and 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 he becomes mandatory he's beat Josh Taylor um he'd beat uh, Pro Grey and it and it'll beat Barbosa, who's just coming off a great win against Ramirez. So he's three three fantastic wins on the trot, and it puts him in a position for me in it to to, to make a a great fight against Teal. Yeah. I mean, Jack and Barbosa is a fight that we really want to see, um, but there's a little narrative under it that we also are really enjoying as well in terms of Eddie and Oscar. Yeah. Are you it, enjoying that? It, it, in all honesty, I'd rather see Eddie versus Oscar rather than <laughs> anything in the world. Can you believe, by the way, that Oscar? You want it eight weeks? It eight weeks. So. Hey, if you can't do it on six, <laughs> six <laughs> no, six hours, no issue. I, I actually, I, I actually think Eddie could could boss it on the jab. Mm. You know, if you come down to my Reach gym, advantage. If you got, if he, if he gives him eight weeks and he comes to my gym for eight weeks, I think I can get Eddie to beat him tactically. <laughs> that would be one. I'm hundred. Only if Oscar's wearing in. high heels, though. <laughs> Just high heels? Maybe cut that one out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cameron Vaughan, obviously, uh, Birmingham open workout tomorrow. Fight against Gavin Gwynn. Just how good is Cameron Vaughan? Um, I mean, we've had the sales pitch from Sam, from Eddie. We've seen bits of him so far. I know there's more to come. Um, but just how special is Cameron Vaughan? And I know Gavin Gwynn's the focus, but how big will 2025 be for, for Cameron as well? Yeah, listen, Cam Cameron's phenomenal talent and... Uh, great prospects and that's the thing we've got to remember he's a prospect and we like to get carried away don't we it's, it's fans and media I alike. love it I, I, I do like it I like the fact that people have got the 
confidence in him to, to take these type of fights. Um, I've certainly have, and, and maybe sometimes in the past, um, promoters or managers are too cautious. Um, I don't think we're being, I don't think we're pushing him too quick, but I don't think we're certainly not being over cautious. You know, you look at he had, in his fifth fight, he had a ten rounder against Jeff Afora, which was a dangerous fight to take, which was a late replacement. But Jeff Afora has beaten fighters when not got the decision, and his record doesn't suggest the type of fighter he is. He's a he's a real handful. I knew it was going to be that type of fight. But those experiences are going to put Cameron in a much better position for the performance he's going to put in against Gavin Gwynn. I know it's not going to be easy. The respect we've got for Gwynn is the reason why we've took the fight, rather than it's not disrespect, it's the fact that we know he's going to give him tough, hard rounds is the reason we, we wanted this fight, because we know how good Cameron's going to be, or could potentially be, but we need to make sure we give him the lessons along the way, otherwise he won't reach his full potential. Yeah. I really like it. Really, really good fight. Um, just one to finish. I know it was a couple of weeks back now, but um, we've asked everyone, so we've got to ask and pick your boxing brain on Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I just thought it was sad. I felt sad. I'm a big Mike Tyson fan, and I didn't watch the fight. I've seen a couple of the highlights, and yeah, I felt, I felt sad. I just hope he got what, out of it what he wanted. I'm assuming he wanted that one last ring walk or, or that, you know, he, he's been paid a hell of a lot of money and, and he wanted it for whatever reason he wanted the money. Um, I, I hope that he's, he's happy and he's content. And I hope that he's, he hasn't sustained too much damage. I just said to somebody else in a different interview, I, I'm really sort of sat on the fence in terms of this, you know, YouTube stuff and Jake Paul and the influence he's had on boxing. But I thought he showed real good humility in, in that last round where, you know, Mike Tyson was probably at the stage where he could have gone in there and finished him. But he stood off him and he's shown him a lot of respect. You know, he, he, he gestured towards him and he sort of bowed as if to say... Do you feel like he did carry... Because I know that was the narrative that people were going with, that he carried Mike. Uh, but I know I, some people have come out and said, I just don't think he could have put Mike away. But you think he might I, have... I do. I, f yeah. I, f I feel like he stepped off and thought, you know, I'm going to show this absolute legend of the game the respect of what he deserves and I, I hope he did because if he did do that then then he's a better person than I anticipated beforehand and I'm hoping that that's what he did because if he did what a beautiful gesture it was.